Welcome back. Now, a testing time for all of us as we put four superfans through a rigorous interrogation of just who knows what the most about Doctor Who. Leave the monsters alone, Charmer. First, there's John Nathan Turner, who produced Doctor Who during the 80s, so he should know a thing or two. Second, there's Gene Riddler, a housing officer from Greenwich. Third, we have Andrew Beach, superfan, the London solicitor who we met already. And finally, there's New Zealander John Preddle, who got to the semi-final of his country's mastermind contest with Doctor Who as his specialist subject. So, John Nathan Turner, JNT, you have five questions on your specialist subject, the Sylvester McCoy era, starting now. What is Sylvester McCoy's real name? Patrick Kent Smith. The full name? Patrick... John Patrick Kent Smith. Percy James Patrick Kent Smith. That's wrong, sorry. Question two. Which part was Sophie Aldred originally considered for? Um, Ray. In? Dirt on the Bannerman. Correct. Number three. What was the name of the young patroller befriended by Ace in the Happiness Patrol? Um, Susan Q. Correct. Number four. In Ghost Light, what was the name of the house? Willoughby Chase. Gabriel Chase. Uh. Number five, your last question, what was the name of the holiday camp in Delta and the Bannerman? Butlins, no. Um, <laughs> I can't remember. Shangri-La. As the leader of the pack, you should have known that. Second, Jean Riddler, your specialist subject, the UK stage plays, and your five questions start now. At which theatre was the Curse of the Daleks originally scheduled to play? The Strand. In London, correct. It switched to Wyndham's Theatre two weeks before opening. Number two, who played the Doctor during the UK tour of The Ultimate Adventure? Colin Baker and John Pertwee and, and also Peter, uh, David Banks. Correct. Number three, where were the pre-tour rehearsals for The Ultimate Adventure held? Wimbledon. West End Great Synagogue in London. Number four, who played the two companions in The Seven Keys to Doomsday? Wendy Padbury and... and don't know pass. James Matthews will have to make that a wrong one, unfortunately. Number five, your last one. In The Curse of the Daleks, who played the captain of the spaceship? Oh. Got to R. Nicholas Hawtrey, the other role he played in Doctor Who on TV, was Quinn in The Power of the Daleks, remember? Mm -hmm. On to Andrew Beach now, and your specialist subject, the TARDIS. Your five questions start now. Which of the TARDIS's controls became jammed in the edge of destruction? Of the fast return switch. Correct. In which story was the existence of a back exit from the TARDIS first revealed? Tomb of the Cybermen. The Wheel in Space. <laughs> ah, number three. Name two of the exterior forms the TARDIS took in Attack of the Cybermen. A uh, harpsichord and a strange cabinet thing. Decorated cupboard. I'll give you that. What was the first one? It was a musical instrument, which I thought was a harpsichord. I've got organ. Can I give him that adjudicator? No. Sorry about that. <laughs> organ. It should have been an organ. The other ones were police box or a gateway or doorway. Number four. In which story was the TARDIS painted a different colour? Happiness Patrol. Correct. And last of all, question five. What was the Master's TARDIS disguised as in Castrovala? Castrovala. It was um, a tapestry. No, a fireplace. Correct. Well, I'll just give you that because you corrected me on my pronunciation. <laughs> and now, John Preddle, last of all, your five questions on your specialist subject, Doctor Who's Companions. Number one, by which name was Stephen originally referred to in the script of The Time Meddler? Got to hurry you. Path. Michael. Number two, which of the Doctor's companions was with him for the shortest time? Melanie. Katerina. What is William Russell's real name? Russell Enoch. Correct. Number four, which female companion died before she was born? Vicky. Correct. She was born in 2493 and left the doctor to stay with Troilus in Troy at the times of Troy, so she must have died then. Number five, what was Ace's mother's name? Audrey. Audrey. It was Audrey. Well done, everybody. Right. And now we go on to the general quickfire round. Are you all ready with your buzzers? Mm -hmm. This is your chance to take over, losers. Number one, who directed the first ever story? <laughs> JNT. Well, it's the same. Number two, in horror of Fang Rock, who was the first victim of the Rutan? Nobody knows. <laughs> the answer is Ben. In Planet of the Spiders, who played Lupton? John, John Durf. Preddle. John Durf. Lots of Johns today. <laughs> who played an ice warrior in all four of their TV appearances? JNT. Bella Breslau. Sonny Caldinez. 
Number five, which two writers wrote stories featuring enlightenment? John Pradle? Barbara Clegg and Terence Dudley. Correct. Clegg wrote Enlightenment, which Enlightenment was a prize, and Dudley wrote Four to Doomsday, in which Enlightenment was a character, played by Annie Lambert. What is the connection between The Greatest Show in the Galaxy and Survival? Andrew. Ace. They were... John. Both directed by Alan Waring. No, I'll leave it there. They were both recorded at the same location I've got here. <laughs> so I have to, I have to well, accept... Yeah, I <laughs> Um, number seven, who wrote under the pen name of Norman Ashby? John. Mervyn Haseman and Henry Lincoln. Correct. On which date was episode seven of the Daleks Master Plan transmitted? John. 25th of December, 1965. Correct. What was the name of the time capsules given to the warlords by the war chief? Andrew. Sid Raps or Side Raps. Correct. What was the name of the radio telescope operator found shrunken in his lunchbox in the terror of autons, John? Gooch. Gooch, correct. Gooch. Who was the first victim exterminated by a Dalek? John Predel. Raven. Anyone else? Andrew. Ian. Ian no, Chesterton. No, Ronson. Um, Genesis of oh, the Daleks. Oh, Genesis of the Daleks, yeah. sorry. Number 12, this is. What was the first line of the song sung by Gwendolyn in Ghostlight? J and T. Let's go down to the zoo. That's the way to the zoo. I'll give you that one. Since you haven't got any so far. <laughs> <laughs> Number 13. In which two years was Mordred un Mordred Undead set? John Freddle. 1977 and 1983. Correct. Number 14. Under which guise did Davros operate at Tranquil Repose? Andrew. The Great Healer. Correct. In which village was the Demons filled? Oh. Andrew again. Got to hurry you. Anyone else? Oldbourne. Oldbourne. John. Oldbourne. Damn. Correct, John. John got Oldbourne, that was correct. Number 16. What was the full title of the first Doctor Who novel to be published? John Peddle. Doctor Who in an exciting adventure with the Daleks. Snappy title. Yep, you're right. Who presented the 1977 Who's Doctor Who documentary? Andrew. Melvin Bragg. That's right, and we can see that on tomorrow's uh, BSB Doctor Who special. Who was the second editor of Doctor Who magazine? Don't know? Paul Neary. Which presenters of Blue Peter have appeared in Doctor Who? Peter, Andrew. Peter Purvis and Sarah Green. And? Anyone else? Janet Evans. Jean, I'll give you that. Right, I'll give that to you. I was just going to ask the very... Shut up. <laughs> I was just going to ask the very last question before it instructed to end then. The last one was, in The Deadly Assassin, who was the assassin and who played him? So it wouldn't have mattered. Chancellor Goff, Goff played, played by Bernard Horsfall. Right, and now we find out who won wins the wonderful prize. I can tell you the winner is... John Preddle with 12 points light years ahead of everyone else. He wasn't a mastermind winner for nothing. The good news is, this is your prize, this wonderful Doctor Who jumper here. Well, almost. The bad news is, you've got to knit it yourself. <laughs> this is the pattern. Not really. We'll, uh, we'll get someone else to do it for you. Thanks very much. Thank you. Tomorrow in 31 Who at 5.15, we have a trivia teaser for you at home. Write in with the correct answers and we'll turn you into the eighth Doctor Who. That is, we'll put the winner's face in the 31 Who titles as if they were the eighth Doctor. And we'll give you a copy to keep. That's tomorrow at 5.15. Sylvester, what did you make of all those contestants? Well, I'm amazed. I mean, I mean anyone could know so much about the programme. I mean, all I, all I could do is just learn the lines and try not to bump into the monsters. Well, as a current Doctor, Sometimes. I'm going to test you. Name as many monsters as you can in <laughs> 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Well, 15 seconds. Uh, Daleks. There was a Rambo Dalek. There was another Dalek. There was a little Dalek, a big Dalek and a small Dalek. And that, was that it? That's as so far the, as I'm going. The, 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 you went through any test to become the Doctor? Then? I didn't have to do a degree in who to get the job. No, no, just learn the lines. Uh, and? Sometimes unsuccessfully. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, well, at least you learnt about costume. At least he looks good, eh? Oh, do you think so? That's very nice of you. Uh, well, uh, I'm back. After the break, we have a four-part story by Glyn Jones, originally shown in 1965. Susan, played by Carol Ann Ford, has just left the TARDIS crew, and we're about to be introduced to a new companion, Vicky, played by Maureen O'Brien. And do watch out for William Hartnell's doctor evading his captors by doing a Dalek impression. The Space Museum. <laughs>